Hi, I'm Daniel Levin Becker. I'm at City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco, and I'm going to be reading from American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis, which was not banned, I don't think, but was subject to a lot of age restrictions in several countries, including Australia and Germany, for reasons that should become pretty clear from the chapter I'm going to read, which is called Tries to Cook and Eat Girl. Dawn, sometime in November. Unable to sleep, writhing on my futon, still in a suit, my head feeling like someone has lit a bonfire on it, in it. A constant searing pain that keeps both eyes open, utterly helpless. There are no drugs, no food, no liquor that can appease the forcefulness of this greedy pain. All my muscles are stiff, my nerves burning, on fire. I'm taking Somonex by the hour since I've run out of Dalmain, but nothing really helps and soon even the box of Somonex is empty. Things are lying on the corner of my bedroom. A pair of girl's shoes from Edward Susan Bennis Allen, a hand with a thumb and forefinger missing, the new issue of Vanity Fair splashed with someone's blood, a cummerbund drenched with gore, and from the kitchen wafting into the bedroom is the fresh smell of blood cooking, and when I stumble up out of bed into the living room, the walls are breathing, the stench of decay smothers everything. I light a cigar, hoping the smoke will mask at least some of it. In the kitchen, I try to make meatloaf out of the girl, but it becomes too frustrating a task, and instead I spend the afternoon smearing her meat all over the walls, chewing on strips of skin I ripped from her body. Then I rest by watching a tape of last week's new CBS sitcom, Murphy Brown. After that, in a large glass of J&B, I'm back in the kitchen. The head in the microwave is now completely black and hairless, and I place it in a tin pot on the stove in an attempt to boil any remaining flesh I forgot to shave off. Heaving the rest of her body into a garbage bag, my muscles slathered with Bengay easily handling the dead weight, I decide to use whatever is left of her for a sausage of some kind. A Richard Marx CD plays on the stereo. A bag from Zabar's loaded with sourdough, onion, bagels, and spices sits on the kitchen table while I grind bone and fat and flesh into patties. And though it does sporadically penetrate how unacceptable some of what I'm doing actually is, I just remind myself that this thing, this girl, this meat, is nothing, is shit. And along with the Xanax, which I am now taking half hourly, this thought momentarily calms me, and then I'm humming. Humming the theme to a show I watched often as a child. The Jetsons, The Banana Splits, Scooby-Doo, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. I'm remembering the song, the melody, even the key it was sung in, but not the show. Was it Lidsville? Was it H.R. Puffin stuff? These questions are punctuated by other questions, as diverse as, will I ever do time, and did this girl have a trusting heart? The smell of meat and blood clouds up the condo until I don't notice it anymore. And later, my macabre joy sours and I'm weeping for myself, unable to find solace in any of this, crying out, sobbing, I just want to be loved, cursing the earth and everything I've been taught, principles, distinctions, choices, morals, compromises, knowledge, unity, prayer, all of it was wrong, without any final purpose. All it came down to was die or adapt. I imagine my own vacant face, the disembodied voice coming from its mouth. These are terrible times. Maggots already writhe across the human sausage. The drool pouring from my lips dripples over them. And still, I can't tell if I'm cooking any of this correctly, because I'm crying too hard, and I've never really cooked anything before. <laughs>